Have you ever opened the PhotoPills app and noticed a bunch of white circles on the map and wondered what they were for? Well, in today's video, I'm not only going to explain how these lines help you plan a Milky Way image, but I'm also going to show you other tools inside of PhotoPills that will make planning your Milky Way photos a lot easier as well. So stay tuned. Hey there photographers, Brenda Petrella here and welcome to another episode of PhotoPills Friday where we unlock the power of the PhotoPills app to help you learn it without all the confusion. If you've been following along the PhotoPills Friday episodes sequentially, then you already have a solid foundation of knowledge of how to navigate and use the app to plan sun and moon images. So today we're going to build on that foundation and plan a Milky Way image together. Now, before we begin, many of you may have already watched my three-part video series on how to photograph the Milky Way, and so you may be wondering if you still need to watch today's video as well. Well, since it's been a couple of years since I published the Milky Way video series and PhotoPills has since updated the app, there are a couple of changes, and so today I'm going to show you the updated version of how to plan a Milky Way image. Now, having said that, if you're new to night sky photography, then I still encourage you to watch my Milky Way series because in it I go into much more detail about the planning process, how to prepare yourself and your gear, and also recommended camera settings for photographing the Milky Way. And even though it's been a couple of years, people are still commenting on how much it's helping them create their Milky Way images. So today's video is only going to focus on the PhotoPills part of the planning process. Okay, with that, let's dive into the app. The first thing we're going to do is open up the planner. Now, from here, let's get our screens to look similar because that way it'll be easier for you to follow along and see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the map settings. My map type is set to satellite. I don't have any map tools on right now. And I'm going to turn off all of the map layers except for the Milky Way layer and then click done. And so now your planner view should look similar to mine with just a red pin, a light gray line, a dark gray line, and the white concentric circles that surround the red pin. Okay, before I explain what all these lines mean, let's first review a couple of basic things to know about the Milky Way. So first, the, the part of the Milky Way that's most photographed is called the galactic core or the galactic center, which contains the highest density of gas in clouds and colors, and it's found in the southeastern to southwestern skies during the Milky Way season. Second, the galactic core is only visible above the horizon during certain months of the year, and this is what's considered the Milky Way season for the region you're in. So for example, in the Northern Hemisphere, Milky Way season is roughly March to October, whereas in the Southern Hemisphere, Milky Way season is roughly February to October. And I say roughly because the exact timing depends on your latitude and if you have a clear view of the Southern horizon. Third, it is important to know the phase of the moon and the time of moonrise and moonset when planning your Milky Way images because the moon will wash out the Milky Way. So ideally you will plan an image either during the new moon when there's no moon in the sky at night or after the moon has already set for the night. And we're going to take these three things into consideration as we plan our image today. Okay, now back to the planner. The light gray line is the azimuth or the direction of the galactic core when it is visible above the horizon and the dark gray line is the azimuth of the galactic core when it is no longer visible. Now it could be not visible because this is when the core sets below the horizon, or it could be because it's just the end of the night and the sun is rising. So if you want to photograph the galactic core, then you want to make sure that the azimuth of the core falls in between these two gray lines, and this will become clearer as we go along. Okay, so now let's talk about what these white lines around the red pin are. These lines or contours represent 10 degree intervals of elevation of the Milky Way arch from the horizon at zero degrees to the zenith, which is the point directly above the red pin at 90 degrees from the horizon. Now, if we set our timeline to the nighttime, you'll see other lines appear there is this thin white line that extends off the screen, a thicker white line, and a dotted curved line. 
So the long thin white line shows the azimuth or direction of the northern and southern parts of the Milky Way where it crosses at the horizon. And the dotted curve line represents the arch of the Milky Way and the biggest dot of the dotted line represents the galactic core. The thicker white line intersects the galactic core dot and it indicates the azimuth or direction of the galactic core itself. And this information tells us how high in the sky the Milky Way arch will be and the azimuth of the galactic core. Now, if you're feeling confused, no worries. Sometimes this can be conceptually difficult to understand at first. So let me demonstrate this in another way to make it easier to see. Also, if you found this graphic to be helpful, you can get access to it by downloading my PhotoPills icon cheat sheet from the link in the description below. Okay, so here we have a BOSU ball, which is just an exercise device. And let's pretend that it is a cross section of your red pins location. And this orange part is the horizon. And you may be able to see that this ball has these ribbed section, and you can think of these as the white concentric lines and photopills, and they represent the degrees in elevation from the horizon to the zenith above the red pin. Now, let's pretend this piece of tin foil is the Milky Way, or that dotted curved line on the map. And when the Milky Way arch is low at the horizon, it can almost appear parallel with the horizon, especially at the beginning of the season. And as the night and season progress, the Milky Way arch rises in elevation and its elevation starts to approach the zenith, which basically is the center of this BOSU ball. Now, if we look at this from a top-down view, we can see that it looks similar to the map in the planner. So when the dotted line of the Milky Way is on the outside of these contours, then the Milky Way is closer to the horizon. And if the dotted lines are closer to the contours near the red pin, then the Milky Way will appear more vertical in the sky and the arch approaches the zenith of the red pin. Okay, so I hope that helps clear it up. Now that we know what these lines mean, let's scroll the top bar to the seventh panel, which is the galactic center or galactic core or GC visibility panel. Like many of the top bar icons, the icon on the left is clickable and it just turns the Milky Way map layer on and off like we did in the map settings at the beginning. This panel also lists the time range during which the galactic center is visible and it also shows the range of the azimuths and elevations of the core when it is visible during that time range. This is the same information that we can derive from observing the light gray and dark gray lines and by scrolling through the timeline. It's just a little easier to see the actual numbers summarized here at the top. Okay, now scroll the top bar to the next panel and this is the Milky Way position panel. Here, the icon on the left looks like an image of the Milky Way and it's responsive to the location of the red pin and the time and date set in the planner. So for instance, if I just scroll the timeline, you can see the orientation of the Milky Way in the icon move, and it correlates with the movement of the white dotted curved line on the map. And this helps you visualize the type of composition you might get within the parameters of the time and date in the planner and the red pins location. Now this icon is also responsive in that if you tap it, it will automatically skip the timeline ahead to the date of the next new moon. And since it's best to photograph the Milky Way during the phase of the new moon, this is a handy shortcut that you can take to search for potential new moon dates that would work for the composition you have in mind. And if you double tap the icon, it will go to the previous new moon date. Okay, next to the Milky Way icon is a set of stacked light blue bars. And these bars are linked to the phases of the moon. The bars basically represent the, the quality of light you will have in a given evening based on the phase of the moon. So since we ideally want no moon or a new moon when photographing the Milky Way so that we have the darkest skies, the more blue bars you have here, the better the quality of light for the Milky Way. So when it's a new moon, you will have the most blue bars. When it is a half moon, you will have 
half as many blue bars. And when it is a full moon, you will see no blue bars. So just remember more is better when it comes to the blue bars. Okay. Moving on to the rest of the panel. Here we have the azimuth and elevation of the galactic center, and it changes as we scroll through the timeline. So the azimuth of the galactic center in the panel correlates with the thick white line on the map and the elevation in the top panel correlates with where the big white dot is relative to the contours on the map. Lastly, the top panel also shows the azimuth and elevation for the highest point of the Milky Way arch, which can be useful if you're planning to create a composite image of the whole arch. Okay, now let's put all this information together and actually plan an image of the Milky Way. As an example, I'm going to show you how I planned the image I took for the time lapse that I showed you in the third video of my Milky Way series, which was of the Milky Way rising over Lake Willoughby in Vermont. And I put a link in the description below if you would like to download the final plan. Now, the reason I chose this location is because the lake itself runs north to south. And so I can be on the north shore of the lake and get a view to the south of the Milky Way with the potential for a reflection if the water is calm enough. And also the lake is bookended on either side by these steep cliffs. And so I thought it would be cool if I could photograph the Milky Way coming down in between the cliffs. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my red pin to the north shore of Lake Willoughby. And since I have this saved as a point of interest, I'm just going to click on load at the bottom, point of interest, and then click on Lake Willoughby. And now my red pin is located at the North Shore of Lake Willoughby and I can zoom in here just to be sure. And yep, there it is. Next, since I know that the galactic center will only be visible in the Northern Hemisphere where I am from around March to October, I'm going to tap the timeline to set the date to March of 2021 to start looking for potential dates when this shot would be possible for the 2021 season. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are cliffs on either side of the lake and I wanna make sure that the cliffs aren't going to block my view of the Milky Way Galactic Center. So to check this, I'm going to activate the black pin in the pin to pin geodetic info panel, which is the second panel of the top bar. And then I'm going to move the black pin to the high point of the taller cliff. And to be able to see this better, I'm just going to go into the map settings. I'm going to change my map type to terrain, click done. And now I can zoom in and put that black pin right at the peak of the taller cliff. Since I find it harder to see the Milky Way map layer when I'm in the terrain view, I'm just going to switch back to satellite view. Okay, now recall that we set our timeline to March, which is the beginning of the Milky Way season. So the Milky Way is going to be more horizontal in the sky and lower to the horizon early in the season. And so it is possible that at this time of year, the galactic core will be blocked by these cliffs. So let's see if that's the case. So I'm just going to scroll the timeline slowly forward. And as I do that, you can see the dotted curved line rotate around the map. And as that thin white line approaches the light gray line, the thicker white line appears. But you'll see that as I cross the location of the black pin, that thick white line turns dashed. Now remember, the thick white line indicates the azimuth of the galactic core. The fact that it's a dashed line indicates that the galactic core of the Milky Way will be blocked by the cliffs at this time and date. And you may remember from episode 17, where I showed you a similar process to figure out whether the sun or moon would be blocked by a mountain, and the azimuth lines turn to dashed lines in those cases as well. Also, notice the location of the dark gray line, which indicates the direction of when the core will no longer be visible on this date. And ideally, to get the shot I want, I want the gray line to be on the east side of the lake and the dark gray line to be on the west side of the lake. But right now, both are on the east side of the lake. So that means the Milky Way core will not be between the cliffs in March. So let's now scroll the top bar to the eighth panel and tap on the Milky Way icon to get to the next new moon. 
And as I tap, you can see how the gray lines shift throughout the season. And it looks like the first best option for this image is on May 11th of 2021, because the light gray line and the dark gray line are on either side of the lake, as I would like. But let's keep tapping to see what other options we have. So it looks like June is a potential too, but as of July, now both lines are on the west side of the lake, and so the Milky Way won't be in the right position for the whole rest of the season. So my options are May and June. So let's double tap the icon to go back to May since that looked best. Now scroll the timeline so that the galactic core is in the middle of the lake from the perspective of the red pin. And I'll zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see. It looks like the best time to photograph the Milky Way on this date for this location is going to be on May 12th, 2021, around 1.16 a.m. And at this time, the core of the Milky Way will be at an elevation of 11.7 degrees, and it will be rising at a bit of an angle right above the lake. And if I scroll the top panel back one panel to panel seven, I can see that the time that the galactic center will be visible will be between 11.22 p.m. and 3.18 a.m. So if I wanted to do a time lapse, I know that I should be able to capture the core during this time frame. However, these times don't account for the cliff. So the timeline will actually be a little shorter, and I can see that by scrolling backward in the time until the thick white line becomes dashed and noting the time when it turns to solid, which is around 11.56 p.m. And so that is the earliest I will be able to see the galactic core from the red pins location on this date. Now, at this point, you could save the plan by clicking on save at the bottom. And if you're able to visit the location before your shoot, you could also use the night augmented reality feature to confirm that your planning is accurate. So we talked about how it's best to photograph the Milky Way when there's no moon in the sky. But what if you wanted to use the light of the moon to illuminate the foreground? How would you plan an image like that? Well, that's the topic for next week's episode, which incidentally will be the last episode of season two. So make sure you download your PhotoPills icon cheat sheet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.